Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In a previous video I introduced the concept of Star Shuttle, which is a starship that is turned into a space shuttle and set alongside the Super Heavy which launches it. In this video I'm going to use Star Shuttle on its own. Uh, people have hypothesize the use of Starship as an SSTO. We are not using it as, as an SSTO, rather we are using it as the first stage. And we have Star Stage 2, which I previously introduced as a Moon or Mars transfer stage as our second stage, and then the payload, all in the bay. And here we have a Raptor vacuum on Star Stage 2 instead of the other engines that I previously used, uh, just for amusement, really. Uh, it, it doesn't really fit very well, as you can see, but we'll try it out. Uh, one of the motivating factors for this is that in the video with Star Shuttle originally, its balance wasn't quite right, so we need a way to test how well it can be balanced for re-entry anyway, and this is faster than launching it with the Star, uh, with Super Heavy, uh, but we, I also want to see what kind of payload it can actually get to orbit like this uh, because, well, it, it would be a competitor to the Orion carrier plane, right? This is the same idea as the Orion carrier plane exactly, except the Orion carrier plane carries the payload on top, not inside. Uh, this is roughly similar to the Neutron rockets from Rocket Lab. Uh, we are bringing the ferrying back down, if you'd like. Uh, so there's that. Um, yeah, so we'll see. The engine configuration on this is different. It is very different. We have two Raptor vacuum engines and then an array of seven Raptor sea level engines so that we can get off the ground properly. Uh, really, yeah, uh, we'll uh, light all of them. We'll light the Raptor vacuums as well. But yeah, it's sort of a trade off. So, yeah. That's that. Uh, maybe a different engine mix would work better, but we'll put it like that for now. That may throw things off somewhat uh, as far as mass is concerned, right? Now we we still have nine engines here. Uh, actually, we I think we only had seven on the previous test, so it might throw things off as far as the mass is concerned, I'm not sure. Uh, but we'll see. The Orion carrier plane has nine Raptor sea level engines, so that is that configuration doesn't have enough room in the back for any vacuum engines uh, yep so let's find out we're launching from uh, Brownsville or Boca Chica and we will try to land the star shuttle at Cape Canaveral uh, we will separately test whether the payload can get to orbit so we'll do that test first we'll test whether the payload can get to orbit or whether we need to reduce the payload size Right now it's 50 tons. Also, I'm not using the original version of the Star Stage 2. The original version of Star Stage 2 was smaller. Uh, this is taking up every little bit of the room in the bay here. It is Star Stage 2 medium. And I'm worried it can't get out of the bay, but the original Star Stage 2 was meant for high transfers with low powered engines. Uh, so that wasn't really conducive to this purpose. Uh, in that case, Starship would get to orbit, and then Star Stage 2 would transfer stuff out to the Moon or Mars and then get itself back down. Uh, that is not happening here, so we needed a larger stage, and I'm trying to make it as large as possible inside the bay. We'll see. So, here we go. As you can see, that results in Starship carrying 194 tons inside of it, but of course this is not to orbit. I mean, that's not the payload to orbit. Okay, here we go with Star Shuttle Solo. I have no idea. Oh, we've got some residual. Hold on, let me just invert and relaunch and see if we can get rid of that. That speaks of some nefarious cracking happening there. Uh, it was showing femtometers, but now it's showing 3.3. .3. Well, let's try it. Let's see what happens. I don't have a good feeling about this. We need to go heading 75. Ignition, oh. and launch. Well, all right, we, we dropped down initially, but it'll be fine. Low thrust weight ratio initially, as you can tell. We need to get to about 4,000 meters per second with this. I mean, 50 tons to orbit is not bad, right?
if it can do it. The key here is that the Starship doesn't need to reserve any fuel, Star Shuttle. I mean, it needs to reserve a little bit of RCS fuel, but it doesn't need to reserve landing fuel. So there is that benefit. It is carrying the wings and landing gear, so there's that drawback. They may balance out in the end. I mean, it's tough to say. The wings help with uh, controlling for landing, but, you know... Starship itself has wings, as it were, already. I configured the engine location so that the outer four Raptor sea levels will be using the locations for the Raptor vacuums, assuming a total of nine engines. The nine engine configuration. Okay, we're gonna throttle down here. And we want the orbital velocity to be 4,000, not the sea level. Okay, I'm gonna start rolling over. So, to a large extent, what this does has already been tested by the Orion carrier plane. Fairly reliably. But, the Orion carrier plane had the benefit of carrying the stuff inside, uh, outside of itself, so... This is going to be a bit of a tricky maneuver. Okay, well, we need to reserve some for return. But I wanted to get for to 4,000. Okay, that'll be good enough. Alright, just hold there, open. Now, I might have to do the time warp trick to get this out safely. A couple. Or... Yeah, let's just... Uh, oh. Uh, maybe we can... I don't know if we can nudge it out. Um... Can you get out? No, let's just... Can we time warp it out? Uh, not in time. Okay, well, let's see if it can get to orbit. <laughs> um, uh, control from here, orbit. Let's activate, activate, prograde. Let's see, I think we might need to go retrograde. No, it's a prograde is the right way. Uh-oh. Okay, we don't have enough time. We don't have enough time. I need to do that a little bit better. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, no, we're coming down hard here. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Mm, this might be too big a stage to get out of there. Yeah, this is not gonna work. Maybe we'll toss it higher up initially. Uh, well, that could be okay, because that just means that stars, uh, the Star Shuttle can glide longer. Hmm. Might glide too long, though. We just need it a little bit smaller. But that would also hurt payload capacity. Well, there's a 2.1 meters per second, which I don't want to see there, but okay. Anyway, ignition and launch. Okay, but there's no telling whether we can get the payload out of the bay quickly enough this time either. Since we're going higher, we'll aim for a lower velocity here. Okay, I'll cut there and open. Then separate. Okay, and I'm going to try and... Okay, time warp. I don't care how you get out, just get out. Uh, but clear it. I don't want any explosions. Alright, alright, alright. Okay. You, orbit, prograde. Uh, I think we don't have enough delta V like this. Well, especially like this. Hmm. Okay, go. So 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get as close to orbit as possible, figure out how short we are, and reduce the size of the payload by an amount that gives this that much extra delta V, and then we'll test Star Shuttle coming down to the Cape. We're not gonna try this out of the out of the bay again. Well, we'll have to get out of the bay for the Star Shuttle to come down, but uh, we won't be too worried about it making it on time. Of course, uh, normally this should be able to retain some RCS fuel to deorbit as well, so we'll have to account for that too. Okay, uh, so we're 400 short for orbit, let's say, and tack on another 150 for coming back down, uh, so 550. So right now it says 4,042, and let's just round it out and say we want 4,600. And of course, if we weren't using Raptor Vacuum and we were using some more optimized engines, it might be better. Uh, in our words, it doesn't have to be that powerful, but... Though we see that sort of helps if you have that much thrust, but we could have like four smaller engines or something. Alright, so that gives us a payload capacity of 37 tons. We could probably shape this so that it actually gets out of the bay properly too. Now, uh, we'll have to see about the happy medium there. But, even so, 36 tons is not... Oh, sorry, 37.25 tons is not the worst payload capacity for a launcher like this. Uh, payload fraction-wise, it's not high, right? Uh, as far as the launch fraction is concerned, uh, it's... What is it exactly? Let's see. It's only 2.5%, and that's being generous, but with both stages being recoverable, so that's pretty nice. Both stages being recoverable, 2.5% is not too bad. Uh, so let's try it again, but this time we'll follow the Star Shuttle. We'll just have faith that the number will work out for the payload. Not really, I'm not saying faith, we just calculated it, then we tested it, so I mean... Okay, here we go again. This will be the first test of the aerodynamics of Star Shuttle. And this time we have 0.0. .0. That's nice. Ignition. And launch. Okay, doing the rollover. We could just start the other way around, but whatever. I'm just so used to orienting things this way in the VAB. Okay, I said 3,800 last time. We have got more fuel because we lightened up the payload, so we've got more extra this time. Okay, open. Separate. Okay, time warp. <laughs> oh, you have to go the long way. <laughs> to go the long way. Okay, clear. Okay, let's redo control from here. There we go. Surface positive. Uh, uh, the Orion carrier plane comes down at a pitch of 30. Oh, we can see Florida over there. The problem is we're probably going to overshoot it. <laughs> uh, and we need to actually see that it needs to car uh, control roll. We don't need the engines wiggling at all. We've got 700 meters per second left here right now after we get rid of the payload. Yeah, this might be too far. Let's see. It's got to be coming down really hard. Higher than the Orion carrier plane normally does it. Maybe it should be more than 30, but I'll take it for now. I don't know how much it can hold, actually. Without the wings ripping off, of course. It's forcing the nose down. It's having trouble keeping the nose down. Which is interesting. I moved the center of lift further back so that it should be more nose heavy than the previous time. But apparently not nose heavy enough. Oh! 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 Yeah! Ooh. 
Okay, well, yeah, just just the body isn't good enough for us. Um, we'll try and go less steep this time. Yeah, it's not so easy. It's not so easy. We certainly can get over to the cape, that's not the problem. I'm thinking... Maybe use about maybe using the smaller stage. I'll let me uh, restart the game and I'll just shrink this by a tiny little bit so that it can get out of the base smoothly, and maybe that'll help. I'll reduce the volume of it as well, and uh, by a commensurate amount, and maybe that'll help things. Okay, so I've made Star Stage Two medium physically smaller, and that does mean that we have less fuel inside of it. And so I've had to reduce the payload to 36 tons. We still aren't getting quite the 4,600 that we tested for last time. Hopefully that'll be all right. We also plan to go shallower in order to have the star shell survive. So that's tricky. Uh, I have moved the wing back a little bit, ho hoping that that'll help the balance. I've also action grouped the engines so that we can turn off the sea level ones instead of having the throttle go down. And yeah, we'll see how it goes. SAS on, throttle is up, ignition, and launch. Oh, that is not right. Uh, where is it controlling from? Okay, that's better. All right, we are past the speed of sound. Not that that's much of a struggle for this. Really, we don't need to get more efficiency on this. It's weird because we have to make sure not to overshoot Cape Canaveral here, and we don't actually want to go too fast. So being more efficient with the Starship doesn't help unless we can pack more into the bay, which we can't right now. It's complicated. Okay, cutting off the three center sea level engines. Okay, just the vacuum engines, RCS on. And that'll do it for right now. Okay, open. Separation. Okay, well, it looks pretty free. Uh, we are... Okay, this is this thing. Okay, trying to move away from it. Can we? I think it's still caught. That might be because it went to a... different part of the... I don't think that helped. Okay. Um, oh, it's going through. Okay. Alright. Uh, no, it's in the middle. Oh no, it's off to the side. Okay. Uh, <laughs> quickly close. This is not good. We've got a lot of Delta V left though. I'm going to... Well, I don't want to drain it so much that we accidentally don't have any RCS fuel, so... We'll wait on that idea. Well, you can see how it's dropping. It doesn't have the lift that we do. So, that's good. Uh, I need to see the actuation. It's pitching down. It's not as bad as before. It's not maxing it out. Oh, the wings have fluttered. Oh, no! Um, we'll try it again. I, I need to auto-strut those. Let me just see. I don't think I auto-strutted them. Yeah, we need to auto-strut. I'll just say to root. Uh, no, uh. Grandparent part? No, heaviest part. Would that be the. I mean, uh, we'll, we'll say heaviest part. Okay. Yeah. Alright. Maybe that'll help. Let's have these two. Okay, let's try that one more time. Well, resizing the 
Star Stage 2 didn't seem to help get it out, but maybe... I just didn't move quite the right way. Mm, let's see... Control from here... Alright. Okay, I'm really trying not to go too high this time. Uh, I want about two minutes time to Wapoapsis. I'm not getting any further than that. All right. Open. Um, let's just not have it turn on its RCS just yet, shall we? Okay, separation. Uh, it sort of bounces around a bit, but... Come on, come on. I feel like you want to get out of there. It's really not getting out of there very well, though. Uh... Okay, that looks good. Pitch 30. That's come on, 30. Roll zero, yes. Close. I mean, you've got auto strutting this time. And I think I managed to waste a little bit more propellant. Why are you pitching down so much? Uh, don't pitch down that much. That would be bad. Also roll, <laughs> please. The 30 degrees is because of testing from the Orion carrier plane. Now, unfortunately, we saw that that sank much faster than, uh, than this does because of the aerodynamics. And that means right now it's going to hit us, doesn't it? Um, trying to move to one side here. Okay, uh, sort of pushed ourselves off a little bit. Okay, let's see the authority that we are using. Please let auto strutting work. The G-forces are serious though. Uh, much worse than the Orion carrier plane, even. Uh, it's got a wiggle. The Orion carrier plane, the body is more aerodynamic than this. This is lighter, I think, than the Orion carrier plane, actually. Okay, we've got some lift here. But we did not go out of whack for the first time with this. Moving the wings back clearly helps, though we, it looks like we have to move them back even further. Now, nope, here we go back down again. Okay, there's Cape Canaveral. We are in Cape Canaveral render range. Uh, at this point, I might risk dumping most of the fuel. And oxidizer, of course. That gets us lighter. We're still sort of in RCS usage area, but we don't need that much. We're using like one liter per second of both combined. Okay. Well, we're slowing down enough. I'm gonna pitch down. And I'm gonna attempt to take control with atmospheric autopilot. Let's see. Okay. Atmospheric autopilot is enabled. 
I'm going to begin to try to turn. Uh, it doesn't want to go along with me. It's turning very slowly. This isn't exactly a proper aircraft. <laughs> This is where the lift, the natural aerodynamics of the Ryan carrier plane's body really, really helps. Trying to be gentle here. Runway is still in sight, as it were. Yeah, but I don't think we have enough height. Let me dump the rest of the propellant. as light as possible. 133 tons right now, which I guess you would expect with the landing gear and the and well the wings, but probably heavier. I mean we're we're being conservative here. I mean depending on how much you believe their estimates for how heavy the cargo starship would be without the extra wingage or the landing gear. Um I, I don't, in my expert opinion, I don't think I can glide all the way to the runway. Uh, I, I, might, I think it might be better to just try and land it on the land here. We're, we're dropping like a rock. And if we don't drop like a rock, we slow down very quickly. I'm gonna go ahead and land over on this side. I don't even know what the stall speed of this is. Keep in mind that the Cape Canaveral, except for the runway, all that Cape Canaveral stuff is just water. Wish it was more decisive about whether it wanted to be land or water, huh? We are using half our pitch authority at this speed right now. And we're increasing vertical speed, so... Yeah, it's gonna land quickly. This shape doesn't allow for much body lift. I mean, there's some lift, I guess, but it's not quite... It wants to just point at the prograde vector no matter what. Uh, 15 meters per second, uh, the impact speed. And at whatever speed it was reading on the surface velocity, I was mainly interested in, interested in the vertical speed. Oh, we're sliding. We're sliding. Oh, no. Oh, no. It rolled over. The rollover accident. Okay. Well, not ideal, obviously. Not ideal. But, but progress, if you will. Progress. Uh, yeah, it's not my favorite flying vehicle. And at 36 tons to orbit, which is what it's looking like right now, it's not a substantial improvement over the Orion carrier plane either. So that's another downside. But an interesting curiosity. Um, well, there you have it. Anyway, that'll be it for me this time. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.